Alright guys, uh, welcome to uh, the second video of week three of Grasshopper. And um, this is the one that we're going to call the topo cutter, the topography cutter. And uh, this is basically the scripted version of um, just manually uh, doing the contour. Oops. Contour of, let's say, a topography like that. And whoops, that's 10. With uh, intervals of 1, for example, right? Uh, but instead of uh, having to basically sort of move uh, all of these sort of contour curves out one by one and sort of flatten them onto the XY plane, uh, for laser cutting, so you can rearrange them, right? Uh, this usually, after you spread them out, and I'm not going to spread them here because it takes forever, um, you would have to project them to uh, the C plane, to the input objects, yes, and then basically sort of rearrange them, right, for laser cutting. Now, the sort of script that we're going to do this time is actually going to help us uh, in terms of. Uh, doing this process more or less uh, automatically. Okay, so there's a lot of similarities with this one uh, and the previous one. Um, so same thing, uh, we're going to use a BREP component, and you'll notice that this, as, as a sort of topo surface, is closed on the sides and the bottom. Right, so if you have a surface, you know, a surface outline, just like project it to the sea plane, or try to find basically its flat sides and close it. Right, so it's a closed poly surface. Uh, usually works best, and you can get a volume calculation off of it. Okay, so we're going to right click and set one B rep, reference that in. All right, and um, you can go back and look at the previous one. There's a lot of similarities uh, with this, except for the bounding box portion right here, right now. Um, but we're basically kind of sort of going to do this, or actually we might use the contour version. Okay, So we're going to need um, the same uh, bounding box command. So actually, let's just uh, go back to the original one, the previous one. and. Um, we can actually just copy these, control C, and switch over to the new file, control V, and it shows up there. Okay, push that in. And this gives us more or less exactly the same thing. Alright, now um, in this case, uh, remember that uh, we're going to be doing contours vertically, right? And if you look at the previous one, you can actually, if you want, uh, you can do the same and actually just copy these because um, a lot of this will actually be similar. So we can actually just like take this, control C, control V, and it'll show up in the bottom and modify this. So I encourage this uh, because sometimes you just don't have to like rethink everything. Uh, so with a contour, we need a B rep, which is this guy, goes into there. A contour start point, in this case, actually is that, right? And uh, if you forgot, uh, point A is this one. And I can actually hide all the other corners. Point B is that, that one. So I'm actually looking for this point that's up there. So I believe that's point E, right? So we want to actually measure uh, point A to point E, uh, the vertical direction. Okay, so in this case for the vector, uh, you're going from point A to point E. All right. Okay. And then uh, what else is it missing? It's missing a contour start point, so that's point A as well. All right. And uh, this is missing a distance. 
Now the distance uh, originally what we had used uh, is based off of like uh, how many layers, right? This original logic is based off of you know subdividing and say I want 10 ribs or 15 ribs or whatever, right? Now, however, for a contour model like this, right? Uh, you're not doing it off of based off of that. You're doing it based off of your material thickness, okay? So this distance uh, measure actually becomes a fixed number, right? So uh, you basically want to, let's say, make a number slider uh, that goes from, let's say, 0, 0.0, 0, 0 to, uh, if this is in inches, right, it's really rare that you have anything larger than, you know, or thicker than a quarter inch. So 0.25. Okay. And uh, let's just set this to 0 0.01, uh, actually 0 0.125. That's a that's an eighth of an inch, by the way, uh, if you're sort of wondering. Okay, so that's an eighth of an inch, uh, or let's say if it's a sixteenth, then that's 0 0.0625, right? And you'll see that if you need to get it more accurate, then you'll actually have to add uh, to the floating point accuracy of the slider, right? So you can double click on the left side here right, and add the digits to like one more. Say okay. So 625, right? That would be a 16th board, you know? So you kind of have to like do the math or sort of say, well, if it's a 16th, this is how much. If it's an 18th, you know, this is how much. Or if it's an eighth, that's how much. But these are usually standard numbers, okay? So we don't need this or this, and you would basically just give it the distance in there. Okay, um, let's take a look. And you, as expected, this is really really dense. So actually, let's do 0.125. Let's do an eighth. Yeah, that looks a little bit more normal. Okay. All right. So this is actually a really simple version of that. Uh, that's easy enough uh, because we're using the sort of vector version. It stops where it needs to uh, automatically more or less. And let's see. So this actually you can right click on your component and actually just type in whatever you want to type. So let's say you can type board thickness. So it's easier to understand uh, later on. All right. So we're both going to uh, try to spread this out and actually label it as well. Uh, so you know which pieces go where or in what rough order. Now, um, to that end, uh, we're going to use a component called the square grid component. And uh, that's in the vectors grid. And here is a square grid. I'm using a square grid. Um, because this is roughly square, and you'll see how we use it. So with a square grid, uh, as soon as I plop it in, you'll see that it actually creates something here already um, at the origin point. If you look at its properties, it uses base plane for grid, size of grid cells is 1, and then number of grid cells 5 by 5. Okay, So we're going to probably need some sliders for this. Uh, 0 to I don't know, 40. I need to get a sense for how big this thing is, so I'll just measure it. And I know really quickly that's about 40, 41 inches. Okay. So uh, actually, this I will probably want to change this to 0 to 50 or so. Okay. As the size of the grid cells. And then the number, um, I don't know how many are here. Here are 88. Okay, so 10 by 10 is enough. So 0 to 10. Copy it twice. And then you can actually just like line these up. Click on this little align. All right. um, that actually will distribute them horizontally x and y 
and uh, this probably let's just make it 10 for now 10 by 10 all right so this is uh, you'll see this basically creates I'll move this out of the way this basically creates a 10 by 10 grid with uh, cell sizes of 50 right and you can kind of change the size of the grid by changing this you can change that right the intervals um, etc etc okay so that's pretty handy um, the outputs one of these are grid cell outlines um, and if you kind of look at the icon I believe that is a rectangle right it contains a collection of rectangles the second one is a point these are points at grid corners right so if you want to take a look let's plop in a point container so it's actually these points right uh, which is fine for us we can use those points um, and so this actually sets up the logic for spreading things out now we need to find the logic for taking these contours one by one and then basically moving them into uh, these grid points right so the component we're using here or going are going to be using here is uh, I believe in the translate tab or the transform tab okay um, under Euclidean there is orient so the orient uh, component asks for a base geometry an initial plane and a target or a final plane right so it basically says uh, let's move whatever geometry you give it let's move from this plane to the other plane so you need to give it an initial plane and a target plane the initial plane um, here is not that hard to find because we can take all of our contours and do a simple area calculation right so I'm double clicking finding the area and if you don't want to know where this is, uh, just hold your control and alt keys and click on the component. And it will actually automatically bring you to where it is in the sort of tab structure, right? And this is true for any of these components. If you're wondering, okay, where do I find this, right? Or if you get a definition from someone and just want to know where, it, where it's categorized. Um, so give it an area and you might get some errors uh, sometimes and actually we can like check that really quick for the most part it's fine uh, you'll get some that are null like here uh, which means something probably happened or it's maybe missing one or two of the layers and that happens sometimes uh, depending on the geometry uh, but you can try oh yeah I think it's this one for example for some reason that intersection just didn't work um, and that can happen sometimes um, so yeah it's not always perfect but I think it's actually something with this let me see it might be something with this surface uh, okay so yeah that solved it I just had to kind of build rebuild that surface with a slightly higher sort of degree point right and then you know all of those errors go away Right, so that's why that particular intersection wasn't working correctly. Okay, so just know that that might be an issue if you're the sort of uh, UV coordinates on, or, or uh, sorry, the um, ISO curve density on that on these sort of curved surfaces is too low. Um, you might get errors like that. Okay, so I just uh, extract, basically rebuilt the surface uh, to a higher UV density and just sort of redid it. Okay, so that's all that problem uh, really quickly. Um, okay, so that's the area, and the area component actually gives us both an area um, in terms of square inch. These are all areas. The ones that have two or more means that on that slice there's two or more sort of parts, right? Because it could be one part here and one part here uh, in in the slope or in that sort of uh, contour layer right so it gives you areas it also gives you centroids uh, area centroid points and that's what actually we're going to use so we're going to take the area centroids and uh, put a lot of xy planes 
on them. So you'll see that here, essentially, you have a lot of XY planes that are sort of at the area centered of each. Okay, so these are all XY planes, and these XY planes are what we will use in our um, initial plane. Same thing for the square grids. We have a lot of points. Uh, at the grid corners, right? These points. And so we're actually going to take these XY planes and do that as well. Okay? So this is one part of the logic. Control G. And then this is the other part. Well, let's sort of move this out. And we can kind of. I usually tend to move the sliders or the user input parts out. This is another part of the logic, right? Okay. Okay. So with the orient component, uh, what we want to look at is uh, say, well, um, the geometry that we want to reorient is all of these contours, right? So it makes sense that uh, this guy goes into here. Okay, uh, and then um, the original initial plane is these, right? So I'm taking basically each of these as the initial starting points of my transformation or my move, if you will. And you'll see something pop up, and uh, this isn't entirely correct, right? Because it's basically taking all of those and smashing them into the same point because I've only given one final plane here. Okay, and then if I push this into here, then you'll see, okay, but then something's wrong here as well, right? Because if you look at this, uh, the ones running in this direction are all the same. It's progressing here because this is slightly larger than that one, etc., etc., right? But instead, all of these are identical if you're going in the y direction, right? So there's definitely something wrong with this distribution. And um, we can actually use this to begin to learn about uh, data structure and trees. So if I take one of these panels, let's just look at our inputs a little bit uh, separately. This first contour, these, as you can see, are all curves. But it's a long list of lists and some of them have only one item, some have two, maybe some have three, I don't know. But it's basically a list of shorter lists that all have different numbers of items. So that's why it can get confusing, right? Because of these uh, unique situations where you know you have one uh horizontal section cut that has two results, right? Okay. Let's look at this. This is the same. Uh, you have some where there are only one item, some where there are two items. Okay. And then our third and last input, which is this guy here, uh, the XY planes of the grid. Actually, this is even stranger. This is uh, 10 by 10, right? Uh, which actually we should maybe make 9 by 9, 0 to 9. So we would get a total of 100 grid points, right? And you'll see that this is uh, 0 to 9 in one list, and there's a like maybe total of 10 subsections or 10 sublists, right? So it's actually listing it in this direction. So as you can see, because of the data structure uh, being done this way, um, it's actually taking one of these and actually applying them to all of these points together, the same identical one, right? So this sort of first section is actually this vertical list. The second section is that f that vertical list, and the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so the problem is, instead of treating this as let's say zero to one hundred, it's looking at it as uh, 0 to 9 or 10 and then these are all zeros right so it's actually duplicating the same ones which we don't want so what we have to do uh, we'll use a component called the flattened tree and to kind of give you an idea of what it does 
if I take this output and put it into the flattened tree, what it does is it actually compresses everything into one long list, right? 0 to 99. So the list structure isn't there anymore, right? It just makes everything, it takes, it deletes all the sublists and just numbers everything from into one big great long list. It's the same for these guys. If you do the flatten, it all becomes one great long list. Okay? And for the contours as well, right? It just puts everything into one great long list. All right. So, we will need to do the flatten on all three of these so they match when they go into the orient. Um, so we know that they all correlate to one another um, in the same way. Now there's a shortcut for that. Uh, if you right click on the inputs, you can actually do the flatten right here as well. Right? It says flatten all data in this parameter into a single list, which is what this component does essentially. Okay, So flatten, and you'll see some of this change as we go. Let's flatten that. And most importantly, let's find this. Okay, so the all three of these flattened, then you'll see that actually now this starts to make sense, right? Uh, the last one here will actually keep on uh, repeating because this is actually the last one, so you can actually ignore probably the last one there. So the, I think the last 12 of these are redundant, and you can actually let's see make it shorter or you know you can tweak the grid size right make it less uh, a smaller grid size because it will actually keep on copying the last one uh, to kind of try to fill the grid uh, where you actually don't have anything there for it anymore because main thing is uh, these have what 88 uh, units for it to copy this has a total of 90 or 99 when I had more right a hundred sort of locations for it to copy to, right? So that's why, uh, especially when you have discrepancy between your inputs and outputs, uh, this sometimes is what happens. Okay? Alright, so we have things spread out. Uh, let's actually just hide our square grid. We don't need it. And you can see this uh, looks right. Should be in the right sequence. Um, going upwards. Uh, in your sort of contour layers, right? And these actually are the sort of matching ones in each corner, so it's going in the right sequence. But just to be sure, what we can do is actually try to uh, number things. And um, to do that, we're going to bring out our good old uh, series component. So with a series component, and I always pull in a panel just to look at it. Okay. We want to start at, um, it starts at zero. Um, we actually want to start at one. So let's put in one. Make a panel that's one. And then step size is one. That's correct. Uh, so we don't need to change that. Um, or if you want to make it explicit, you can do that as well, just so you know, uh, without hovering over it. And then number of values in the series. Uh, this will actually want to come from how many uh, sort of sections we have, how many contours we have, right? Uh, and then how many sort of o overall objects we have. And there's an easy way to kind of figure that out because you can measure right uh, how many items there are in uh, the contour how many curves there are right and when I hover over it the, the sort of output it also says okay there's 88 uh, locally defined values and that's what we want basically so this goes from 0 to 76 75 so the ones that are it's counting the ones that are doubled up like this as well right okay so Let's see. On the sets list, there is actually a list length. Measures the length of a list, right? Okay. And so, uh, if we do that, okay, 
So the same by the same thing, um, because it's actually counting how many sublists there are, this guy uh, we will have to find as well to actually get the right count. That's 88. Okay, so 88 goes into here. Number of values in the series, a total of 88. So this will go from 1 to, it will basically number 1 to 88, right? Uh, now this is a point zero, uh, which we really don't want here. And so what I will do uh, in the output is actually pass it into a integer um, under parameters, primitive, integer. Right? Or you can just double click and type int, right? integer. So if I pass it through an integer container first, that basically removes the zero. And that gives me a nice numbering scheme. The component we'll use for this uh, is actually under display, the display tab. Uh, let's see, dimensions and text tag 3D. Right? Text tag 3D, location orientation of a text tab, which is an empty plane parameter. Uh, the text to display, which is this actually. So let's do that. Size of text, optional color, and test text text justification. Right? So you can say top left, top left, blah blah. Um, that's actually just middle centered. For now. So location. The location actually comes from where uh, our reoriented geometry is, right? The centroids of the reoriented uh, geometry. And so you can either do that or you can just grab these as well, right? These basically mean the same thing. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll see in these the numbers starting to pop out. And actually, let me hide these planes. Uh, let's make the size of the text a little larger. So one, two, I don't know, five point oh. I don't know if that's too large. Let's see. Okay, let's do. And this is just to kind of uh, do this so you can actually see it. Okay. Now, you will also see here that. Um, the number scheme isn't quite right either, right? Because all the one, these are all labeled as one, these are all labeled as two, these are all labeled as three. So there's awfully obviously something wrong with this as well, right? So the integers, uh, these sort of location and orientation tags that's coming from here is still that original sort of broken version or the um, non-flattened version of the of this, right? So actually instead of using this we might actually want to grab the original sort of reoriented geometry and use that and to do that let's do another good old area command to grab all the area centroids and if you look at the list from this this is one big long list right so that's actually more accurate and so we should use this instead okay and one, two, three. So we can check really quick. Once it gets to 86, 87, 88, right? You'll see that once it gets to 88, it basically keeps on duplicating the same one, right? So this is actually a way of telling, like, okay, that our last sort of item in this list is actually 88. So you don't need that many. As long as you can accommodate 88 you're probably fine. Okay, so this part, um, control G, and let's label it.
So that's more or less it. Um, obviously, you would you know kind of tweak the text size so it fits you know within the sort of smallest uh, location. Um, within the sort of smallest piece, right? It doesn't go beyond the boundaries. Um, and that's sort of more or less it. You can bake the text tags themselves. Uh, and then you can also bake the orient, right? And sometimes, you know, basically, like I said earlier, you know, if this is the final geometry that you will want to bake, uh, I will pull that out into a BREP by itself. Actually, in this case, because these are curves, right? You don't want them to be curved, so I'll use a curve component uh, like that. You know, and say, you know, bake curves, something like that. Uh, curves, right? And so eventually what you bake is the tags and the curves, and then you have everything more or less in place. Hide stuff that you don't need. And uh, that's more or less it.